Hi, I'm Dr. Julia Shedler. I'm content lead for statistics at Zybooks, and I'm going to talk about how the introduction to statistical investigation Zybook is aligned to the American Statistical Association guidelines for assessment and instruction in statistics education. So here I am in the instructor resources chapter, which accompanies uh, the ISI Zybook, and we've got the gaze report recommendations reproduced here and also a link to the full report if you're curious. So I'm going to jump right in and start off with the first uh, report recommendation, which is to teach statistical thinking. The first piece of that is to teach statistics as a part of an overall problem solving process. And so that process is reflected in the Zy book here as the six step method um, for statistical investigation. So we introduce this in the very first section and it's going to be referred to throughout the book to help guide students into knowing which part of the process of analyzing a research or of answering a research question each item they're learning in their statistics course fits into. So one way we do that is in this organ donor example in the first section, we talk about, you know, here's where the research question goes, here's where data visualization goes at a really high level. Later in the book, um, when we start to delve into a full analysis for the first time, so here we're learning how to analyze um, a single proportion um, and answer research questions involving data that could be analyzed using a single proportion, we start off with just the research question and just the, the study design details and we go uh, into, into detail about that. Later on in the book, when students are a little bit more accompanied, you know, they've seen lots of different analyses, they've seen the six steps in a couple different contexts, we're checking their understanding a little bit more informally. So here in chapter six, uh, students have learned a little bit more about um, how to use conditional proportions and bar graphs. And so this activity is here to just reinforce that the things that they've been learning in this new context of analyzing categorical data with uh, two groups is still being fit into that overall investigative process. So the second part of that first recommendation is to give students experience with multivariable thinking. So again, we do that in the very first uh, chapter. So here's an example of an animation that takes students through uh, a univariate dot plot, so just one variable, uh, and then adding a second variable onto that using color coding. That's one example of multivariable thinking. And then as they proceed through the book, you can see that you know once they hit chapter six, we're in the we're out of the one sample analysis category and we're into the two sample analysis category. So there's going to be multiple variables in all of these sections. So one example of three variables would be when we are talking about regression and we might add a third variable uh, as a color coded um, or plotting character coded uh, aspect of a graph and a scatter plot. So this animation shows what the full combined data set looks like and then also breaks it out um, by two levels of a categorical variable. So uh, lots of integrated multivariable thinking throughout the Zy book. The second recommendation is to focus on conceptual understanding. And so luckily the Zy book's platform and pedagogy reinforces this as well. So to show you about that a little bit, um, each Zy book section contains three to five subsections where they follow a say show ask format. So we say a little bit of text, usually introducing a definition or uh, the study design um, uh, or any details that are relevant to the concept covered in that subsection. That's followed up by an animation which students get um, taught, walked through with captions to help expand on that conceptual understanding. That's the focus of the section. And then finally, after viewing that animation, students answer um, conceptual questions. So uh, that say show ask format really helps a lot to focus on conceptual understanding. And then from a statistical perspective, we try to answer questions, uh, we try to ask questions that involve more interpretation rather than calculation. So you can see that here, none of these um, answers are, are asking them to calculate anything, it's asking them to interpret um, what they've, uh, the data that they've seen and the strength of evidence uh, for the null hypothesis. Another example would be here in chapter seven where we're comparing two means. Um, the animation gives kind of the output that a student would get from a statistical software um, and then asks con again conceptual questions. So if the data was a little bit different, what would they expect to happen? Um, so again, we're not saying what, how would the statistic change? We're asking them to make a prediction given uh, a visualization and a little bit more detail. So that's how a few examples of conceptual understanding 
being the focus of the pedagogy of this book, both platform wise and for statistics specifically. The third recommendation is to integrate real data with a context and a purpose. So the ISI program uses a different uh, data set for every single section. So for example, in chapter two, um, there's a study in the College Mathematics Journal focusing on rock, paper, scissors. So the data set is a real data set involving someone playing rock, paper, scissors. Pretty simple, but that's appropriate for what's uh, the type of analysis we're learning about in the second chapter, which is for one proportion. Uh, later on, that's carried through throughout the rest of the Zai book, and at the end of every chapter is a tools, data, and formulas uh, section, which contains the links to any studies which use the data that was focused on in the section, as well as uh, files containing the data or um, frequency tables, if appropriate, like it is here in chapter six. So the fourth would be to foster active learning. And so again, the Zybooks platform very nicely helps uh, uh, the student to have an active learning experience. So like I've shown a couple of times, the animations really focus on building up uh, the concepts in a visual manner. So observational study is introduced uh, in this subsection and then the animation goes into that and then um, asks some follow up questions. So that's all very interactive. The students only reading um, without sort of interactive uh, clicks to help them reset their attention. Um, so most of the time they're clicking around, they're reading things based on um, the answer they've given. Another example would be the challenge activities. So when a student uh, starts a challenge activity, they're given a, uh, again, another real data context and they're asked to answer that question. Um, and so if they, if they get it right, then they see the answer. Uh, and then proceed to the next level. So here they're presented with another uh, different context. So again, that's more real data, but then also focusing on being a little bit more interactive than if they were just reading. Uh, another place where interactivity is really well integrated in the book is through uh, the scaffolded tools. Um, and so that goes with uh, the uh, fifth recommendation, which is to use uh, technology. So kind of tying the active learning and the technology pieces together, uh, we have uh, built simulation tools that accompany this Zybook since it uses a simulation based approach to teaching statistics, which you can learn about in another one of our videos. Um, but essentially what you need to know here is that uh, you don't actually need to use uh, another external software. So students uh, have uh, the opportunity to engage with these uh, simulation applets, which allow them to um, really kind of get an idea of the variation going on um, for the data that they're analyzing. So that's scaffolded within the content. Uh, if you wanted to use um, these applets with your own data examples, um, there are sort of example agnostic versions included in that tools, data, and formulas um, chapter. So you can also upload um, your own data sets. Um, and so again, technology is fully integrated into the book and you don't actually have to bring in uh, anything else to include technology. So that's how we are aligned with the technology uh, recommendation. And then finally, um, the sixth recommendation is to use assessments and imp to improve and evaluate student learning. And so again, the Zybook book is really nice for that because each of the, sorry, let me go back to, let's say here. So every time a student um, completes an activity, so for this interactive one, completion is doing uh, a thousand repetitions and then um, obtaining some output and answering a question. Um, for the question uh, sets, it's just clicking on the right answer. So if I was a student, I'd be you know, getting clicking on the answer I thought was right. If I got it wrong, I'd be reading through it and then I would click through until I got the right answer. And so you can see this will turn orange and give them a little check mark. And you can actually see that aggregated uh, for all of your students. So you here is a, um, screenshot of uh, a typical type of uh, data you might see in the analytics view. Um, so you can see, you know, our students really starting to spend a lot more time when they hit chapter four, our students struggling more on the challenge activities or the participation activities. You can break this out by section and you can really identify where students are struggling. So that's one way the data in the platform would help you assess student learning and what's going on. Um, of course, we also have the challenge activities, which can be assigned as like homework. 
And then we also have a test bank. So there will be four to 10 questions per section, which you can use to create assessments. So that's not all the ways we're aligned with the gaze standards, but it is a couple. Um, if you want more details about uh, the ISI uh, Zybook in particular or Zybooks in general, feel free to watch our other videos or reach out to your sales rep uh, and they can get you the answers that you need. Thank you.